Hey, Dr. Matt here. So Americans consume 655 pounds on average of dairy every single year. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that is a lot of dairy. Not to worry though, if you're consuming dairy for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, I'm not going to um, you know, bash you or bash your dairy. It's not what this is about at all, so keep watching. I think you're going to be very informed about dairy when this is over. So I get messages all the time asking about you know, dairy and if it's causing cancer, if it's associated with prostate cancer, breast cancer, um, you know, my, my, uh, uh, how much calcium do I need for my bones? Is, is there any place I can get calcium other than cow's milk products? And then just on and on and on. Dairy is always at the forefront of some people's minds when we're talking about nutrition and food substance. And the first thing that I think we need to look at in relationship to dairy and dairy consumption is whether or not the, when I say dairy, I'm talking about cows now, whether or not that cow dairy is from an A1 or an A2 beta casein cow. So beta caseins, they make basically make about, about 30% of the protein um, in cow's milk. But that 30%, I'm telling you what, it can dramatically change, make a difference in how that cow's milk impacts you, me, anybody else that's consuming dairy milk, cow's milk. So we want to take a good look at that 30%. So historically, most cows would contain um, <clears throat> mostly A2 beta casein. And that was just that was just how it is, A2, A2, A2. However, nowadays, pretty much 99% of the cow's milk you see in grocery stores is going to be produced from cows who are um, creating A1 beta casein milk. Um, or it might be you know a little bit A1, or a lot of A1, a little bit of A2. And the reason that most dairy is of the A1 variety now, hope this doesn't get too crazy, A1 versus A2, but A1 less desirable, A2 more desirable is what we're looking at here. The reason most cows are producing, um, or most uh, grocery stores, carry tons of A1 and most farms are loaded with A1 cattle is because A1 basically is this beta, beta casein is a specific genetic muta mutation happened hundreds of thousands of years ago. Um, and uh, these breeds like Holstein and British Shorthorn, there's a few other ones, they produce a lot more milk um, at way less cost compared to um, the A2 variety. So uh, yeah, you know, once again, money basically is winning out potentially um, uh, over health, uh, which uh, as we go into this, we'll talk about the you know, potential downside of A1 milk and why sometimes you know, people gotta come over profit. So on the other side, milk that has a high A2 beta casein, which is found in breeds like uh, Guernsey and Jersey uh, cattle, and a few others. Jersey is probably the most common one we have here in the United States. Just because um, I would say, you know, though a Jersey cow, it's, or you, you have a Jersey cow, or you know, your buddy has a Jersey cow, or it came from Jersey cows, it doesn't mean that that's 100% A2 milk, though. In fact, the majority, unless you're doing hair samples, um, and, or, you're, or you're testing the milk after uh, the, it's been produced, it's probably going to be a combination of A1 and A2. And as we're going to talk about here, the A1, it can produce a peptide that can be problematic for a lot of us. <clears throat> so why does this matter, you ask? I'm glad you ask. Well, the A2 protein structure, this is the, the better type of beta casein, is much more comparable to human breast milk, to goat milk, to sheep milk, to buffalo milk, to camel milk, uh, which you know, all these types of milks, I mean, especially human breast milk, right, uh, are way less problematic for humans and uh, are tend to be much more hypoallergenic, less distressing, you know, promoting health, benefiting us, um, and, and less, less likely to promote allergies and that kind of thing. Uh, and then on the other side, of course, is the, the A1, where uh, potentially the opposite might be happening for us. So you just got to be thinking, if it's like my mom's breast milk, then it's probably going to be better than um, what's not like my mom's breast milk because breast milk is what humans get. Um, and there's literally is nothing more potent 
um, more awesome than a baby getting breast milk from his mother or her mother. So uh, our understanding right now related to the, the problems basically with A1 beta casein uh, is this peptide called BCM7. Basically, BCM7 is a, is a metabolite of, di of the digestive process um, that occurs um, when we consume A1 beta casein milk. Or it can also happen via homogenization stuff too. But um, when beta one beta when A1 dairy is broken down, BCM7 is created, and BCM7 is is an irritant um, to humans. You know, it's been linked to things like type one diabetes, heart disease, uh, autism, or progression of autism. You know, and just generalized digestive inflammation. And, and really, basically, the younger a child is when they're introduced to A1 dairy, uh, the greater their intake of A1 dairy. So like the more they're, they're consuming of it, the greater the risk of type 1 diabetes. Crazy, I know. But even though type 1 diabetes isn't like some super, super common thing, uh, and, and there's, there is definitely, you know, there's um, a lot of genetic factors and other environmental factors in there. But this type 1 diabetes, you know, it's a, it's a big, big problem if you get it. You know, you could be on insulin the rest of your life. So anything we can do to decrease this risk, we want to do. And essentially what happens in type 1 diabetes is basically the immune system starts attacking the pancreas and decreasing and potentially eliminating its ability, these beta cells' ability to produce insulin. So if um, potentially you know, some dairy product coming into us was increasing our risk for that, man, we want, we want to take a look at that. So like I said, I know there's a whole genetic environmental factors associated with type 1 diabetes that are definitely beyond just drinking uh, A1 milk. But there's definitely a pretty strong casual, ca causal relationship between A1 beta casein uh, and type 1 diabetes. And given the fact that type 1 diabetes is definitely life altering for, for kid, for family, uh, I think we really want to consider, you know, maybe potentially backing out from the ingestion of A1 milk and potentially maybe looking at getting A2 milk if you're going to continue drinking a lot of dairy milk. So there was a study published in 2016 in the Nutrition Journal um, that showed A1 beta casein was associated with uh, increased risk for gastrointestinal inflammation, that um, the uh, constipation was more likely to be an issue, that there was uh, even um, like decreases in cognition and in processing ability, processing speed, uh, and you know, basically answering questions accurately. And that was compared to those receiving A2 beta casein. Uh, you know, and they, the, people, the, the people receiving A2 beta casein did not have the same impairments that those receiving the A1 uh, beta casein have, had. So there's another study that found that autistic children who consumed A1 cow's milk had worsened behavior symptoms. Uh, so who wants to have worsened behavior if you don't have to have it, right? <laughs> And then there's another study that found that high levels of BCM7, so BCM7 is the thing that the metabolite from A1 beta casein, right? BC, BCM7 in the blood of infants was much higher and, uh, and, and was associated with basically children who would stop breathing at night. So children who would stop breathing at night were showing to have higher levels of this BCM7. And of course, stopping breathing at night is associated with this thing called SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. And, you know, nobody wants to mess with that. that, that you know, it's, a, it's a terrible, super sad, um, you know, thing if, if a child dies or a baby dies from sudden infant death, death syndrome. So if potentially, um, you know, the A, A1 milk either wasn't coming through the breast milk of the mother or A1 milk wasn't being given to the child or via formula, you know, we wouldn't see as high of BCM7 levels in the blood and we may have a decreased risk of these babies, um, the inflammatory response um, causing these babies to stop breathing and potentially ending up with sudden infant death syndrome. Because basically in these children with high BCM7 levels, they found that there is an enzyme that essentially uh, is not adequate to uh, break down the BCM7. And the enzyme is called DPP. Four. Um, so this this enzyme DPP4, if it's not breaking down BCM7, the BCM7 is just building up 
in the blood uh, of these infants, and that, that's causing a lot of irritation, inflammation, and that kind of thing. So if an in, infant is insufficient, is, su uh, is sufficient in DPP4, then they should be able to break down BCM7. But if they're not, then, and they're drinking all this A1 cow's milk, then, um, or their mom is drinking tons of A1 cow's milk and they're, and they're receiving breast milk from her, you know, then they could be you know, promoting this inflammatory response that leads to something like sudden infant death syndrome. My philosophy is if there's something that we can easily trade in and out, I mean, A1 milk, A2 milk, it's not gonna taste any different. It's, I mean, it's, it's literally gonna, as far as I know, <laughs> in my, I mean, goat milk will taste different than cow milk, but A2 cow milk versus A1 cow milk doesn't really taste much different. And I think you could easily uh, swap it out. And so it would be, um, you know, be an easy opportunity to get rid of that potential for any issues with that, that BCM7 peptide rising in the blood, causing inflammation and potentially, you know, potentiate a, a really bad condition for a baby. And so I think, you know, for, for mothers, it would be advisable if you're breastfeeding your child, which hopefully you are, if, you're, if you have a baby, because that is massive nourishment for them. It would be advisable that uh, you minimize your intake of A1 milk and uh, maybe even switch to A2 milk exclusively. Uh, and then if for re some reason the baby's got a formula, you know, use goat milk formulas or you know, if you can find an A2 formula out there, I'm not aware, aware of any A2 uh, um, you know, milk, milk formulas or infant formulas for babies, but there are definitely some goat ones out there. So uh, BCM7, it's also been reported to uh, downregulate glutathione expression uh, in humans. And I think this is part of the whole process it's playing, but if glutathione expression is downregulating humans, especially, especially within the gut, gut epithelial, so that first layer of gut cells, and then nerve tissue as well, uh, and this, this BCM, BCM7, the way it does this is it basically decreases the ability of these cells or tissues to uptake cysteine. And like I've talked about a bunch of times, cysteine, or you may have heard of the supplement, N-acetylcysteine, is a huge player in raising glutathione levels. And you have to have cysteine to make glutathione. So if you make it so that the cells can't uptake cysteine, then they are, um, they're not gonna be able to create glutathione. And so at glutathione levels, as they, as they go down, as they're depleted, you know, that becomes even a bigger issue if a kid gets sick or a, a human gets sick, they're that much more susceptible to disease and dysfunction. So it is definitely to our benefit to strongly consider slowing down the ingestion um, of, of A2 milk, I mean of A1 milk, so that um, we don't deplete the master antioxidant glutathione in our tissues. That is a, um, you know, there's, there's like no condition that really that adequate glutathione levels doesn't benefit. And, you know, if you reduce glutathione levels, glutathione concentrations, you know, that's implicated in, you know, everything from uh, like neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia, cardiovascular illness, pulmonary diseases, uh, immune dysfunction, increased risk of, uh, uh, you know, a respiratory condition going from a mild thing to a, an emergency thing. Uh, and then, of course, all the different autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, um, cystic fibrosis, scleroderma Sjogren's, all these are all more likely to happen in a body who's, who's depleted of glutathione. So basically low glutathione concentrations are not associated with health accumulation. And we're always looking to accumulate health, right? So the way we're going to keep related to dairy, uh, our glutathione levels at, at, a, at a desirable level is to not suppress cysteine in uptake by ourselves. And that is simply by keeping BCM7 low. And that is most easily done by not consuming A1 milk. So in contrast to A1 cow's milk or cow dairy, 100% A2 cow milk, so 100% of the milk is A2. Uh, that's actually been demonstrated to increase glutathione, glutathione levels on the other end. So one is you know, making it harder for the glutathione to be produced. The other, the A2, when it's 100% A2 uh, milk, is actually increasing con concentrations of glutathione. Isn't that amazing? Just one little shift in a protein can make that, that big a difference. So, you know, if you have acne issues, uh, sure, I'd give A2 milk a go, but um, milk still has hormones in it, right? So it probably isn't going to take away your acne issues. Though, it, you know, it, it would be to your benefit still, maybe have less digestive distress, which may play into that. Um, you know, probably eczema, psoriasis, those kind of things, that might actually benefit just by swapping out A1 to A2 milk. Um, also, you know, mothers who, uh, who breastfeed, 
when you when you first um, start making milk, the colostrum, um, you you will produce a weak version of BCM seven, um, and that is actually uh, shown to basically uh, help in bonding between mother and baby. But it doesn't have any of the negative implications that BCM seven has when it comes as a metabolite uh, from the A one beta casein milk. So. Don't be afraid if you read that somewhere at all. Breastfeed your kids. Um, if, a mo- if a mother consumes A1 beta casein milk, though, uh, they will pass that BCM7 metabolite on to their kids, onto their babies. So that's why I'm saying it is definitely in your best interest. Strongly consider getting 100% A2 milk to, to drink. Uh, for those who um, you know drink raw milk and that kind of thing, unfortunately, it doesn't matter if you're if it's um, you know, A1, A2, you're, you're still, you know, it has to be A1 milk or it has to be A2 milk. It can, it can be as raw as you want it to be. It's not going to change the, the negative potential effects that A1 beta casein would have on the body or is suggested to have on the body. So um, remember that. Go get, go get your cow checked. Check those hairs. Make sure, see what the genetic makeup is. Check, check the milk. Um, see if there's actually any uh, a1 in there because there could be a2 but there could also be some a1 with it and we want straight up a2 100 percent across the board uh i will say that homogenization which uh you know it's, it's just evil really from <laughs> for milk no no be- there's no health benefit for humans to homogenize milk but the homogenization process uh can actually cause a2 milk the good stuff right to actually produce a little a bit of bcm7 so this it's much lower um, level, of course, but um, still, that's just like stay away from ho- homogenization. If you know of a benefit um, other than texture um, or look of, of the milk, please put it in the comments. I would love to hear that because I cannot see, I cannot find any benefit whatsoever um, of homogenization. I'll, I only see a downside for uh, human consumption and human health. Um, you know, I, I found that many patients who could not consume cow dairy from cows uh, due to side effects. And you know they thought, oh my goodness, I got, I got lactose intolerance, lactose is the problem, that, that sugar in cow's milk. But they, they could actually go ahead and consume goat milk um, or sheep milk or goat, goat uh, cheese and, and sheep cheese without any issues whatsoever. And you know, this suggests that you know, lactose was not the problem because there's lactose in goat milk and there's lactose in sheep milk. Um, and maybe what's the problem is it is that A1 beta casein because there's not going to be the A2 beta casein. Um, there is going there's not going to be A1 beta casein in goat milk or sheep milk. They are they are A2 um, milk producing um, animals at least for now for now they are. <clears throat> so perhaps the reason these people are having issues uh, with their cow milk was just that A1 uh, creating the metabolite BCM7 that irritated the body. Um, and, you know, and it wasn't a lactose issue at all. Just my thoughts, just something to consider. Uh, one other consideration related to lactose intolerance is that you know, some experts suggest that the reason people actually become lactose intolerant in the first place and can't digest that anymore to lose that capacity is because of the A1 milk they're consuming. Uh, and that, that irritation, that inflammation uh, is actually what leads to degradation of the, the enzymes that would um, help the body break down lactose uh, in the digestive tract. So A1, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of potential issues there, a lot of potential problems. You, you want to consider if you're gonna consume you know, any consistent level of it. So what are we going to do when it comes to cow's milk? That is a fantastic question. Number one, I would look at you know, getting goat milk instead of cow's milk. So many benefits across the board for goat milk. Number two, if you own your own cow, you know, you're milking your own cow for the family, for the family farm, you know, local people kind of thing, I would go to great lengths to find a 100% A2, A2 dairy cow and keep that baby as healthy as possible. Um, and then number three, you know, find a friend, a co-op that has 100% A2, A2 dairy and support them, get your dairy products through them, from them, so that, um, you know, that the idea, the need for that um, grows and we get more and more and more uh cows and cattle that are A2, A2 breed and, um, you know, are 100% uh, A2 dairy production without any of the, you know, half A1, half A2, three quarters A1, quarter A2, um, that kind of thing. All right. So let me know 
how you're getting your A2 milk. Let me know if you tried going from A1 to A2, how that worked for you. I would love to hear it. Uh, if you have, you know, if had issues going for, if you went, had, were drinking milk, cow's milk before, you went to goat's milk, love to hear that work for you. Seen, seen it benefit so many people over the years. So uh, uh, high potential could benefit you. All right, share this with your family, friends, subscribe, hit the like button, and um, can't wait to talk to you guys again. Hope you guys are accumulating health and don't let anything get in your way of doing that.